Okay, so welcome to the fifth episode of building a website using Visual Studio 2022. This is the final video that I'm going to be running on Microsoft Identity and we're going to continue modifying the template. Only this time in demo three, we're going to be working on starting a new project with a registration plan. So I'm just going to go straight into the demo on this one. So I hope you enjoy it. In this third demo, I'm going to show you how to create a new project and modify the registration from scratch without um, implementing anything in the first place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new project and in this case we're going to keep with the model view controller and I'm going to call it demo3 like so and we'll change that to demo3 application nice and simple. Now this time I'm not going to choose an authentication type, I'm just going to go straight into create and let it do its thing. Okay, so here we are, we've got our demo 3. I'm just going to run it for you so you can see what it looks like when we're uh, using it. And straight away you should notice some things are missing. So first of all we haven't got a login and we haven't got a register button. So both of those are missing. So we don't actually have that authentication available for us. Right, so I'm just going to close that down. Oh, these two still work. So home and privacy, they still do their thing. But we haven't got this other bit. So I'm going to close that down. So the first thing we need to do is we need to introduce identity to this. So I'm just going to right click here. We're going to go to add and we're going to go to new scaffolded items and I'm going to simply choose identity and add it. Let it go and get it. Just wait for the uh, information to transfer across. Okay. Oop, got an error. I'll uh, just uh, let it run it again. Sometimes that happens. Okay, there you go. So, just like we had before, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing like I did last time. So we're just going to choose a layout page. So I'm going to go to Views, Shared, and Layout. There it is. And then I'm going to just choose Login, and I'm going to choose Register. Those are the only two pages I want to modify. That doesn't mean that all these other pages aren't available. It just means I'm not choosing to edit them. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to create a database area for the identity to sit in. So I click on this plus symbol here and it suggests this is what I'm going to do. Well actually what I'm going to do is where it says demo3 I'm just going to put db after it just to signify that it's a database. Add that. And in this box here I need to set up the app user. So I'm going to do that straight away. So just type app user in there and hit the plus button. Oh sorry. App user in here and then hit add. Okay, so app user is now being set up. And then I'm going to simply say add. And what this will do is it will use the scaffolded information and start populating the information straight onto my project. Let's just see where we go. So in a moment, we should start seeing some familiar folders appearing. And there you go. Straight away, we've got areas. Okay, and in the areas, we've got identity, then we've got data and pages. So in data, we've now got app user and we've got the um, database context. So I'm going to go into app users. And again, this should look fairly familiar. But it's already populated app user and it's an extension of identity user. So here I'm going to have the first um, variable set up. So it's going to be a string and it's going to be first name. And just like before, when I press return, it's going to guess that we're going to want last name. So I'm going to let it have that and simply have public string first name, public string last name. Once those two have been done, I can then close that. So I'm happy with that. Now, if I run this application, I'm kind of expecting there to be an error. So there you go. So I don't want it to continue. The error is in programs.cs, we're still not able to find where app user is. So again, if we simply click on that and press control full stop or period as some people call it, and then we're going to use 
the location of where the app user is. So it's done that for me up here. It's in the identity data folder. Okay, so that's done all that for me. So now when I run this application, it should fire up perfectly fine. Just ignore those, it's just saying that they're non-nullable. Okay, so once again, it's working again, but we still haven't got that login and register over here on the right-hand side. Okay, right, so now, as before, I would have to do a lot of work to try to get the database set up. But in this case, most of the work's already been done for me. So I'm just gonna simply go up to Tools and you get and do the package manager. Okay, so unlike before, we simply just need to go and set up the database. I've already updated the app users file. So let's just go straight into it. So I'm gonna add a migration and I'm gonna call it initialize. Like so. And straight away, it's created um, the necessary information to do that. And then we can just go straight into update database like so. Okay. And that's the database now created. So we'll only have a look at it now. So I'm just going to go into database and we'll go into, let's refresh that. Go into database, databases, and there's demo three. And under tables, we should have users. We're just going to have a quick look just to see whether we've got first name and last name in there and yet they're actually at the beginning of the database structure so they're in a more useful position so it's actually got an advantage on that so let's close that so the database has actually been done so we've done that bit let's close that screen so there's a couple of things that we now need to do within the program just to get it working because like I said at the moment if I go into demo 3 It has absolutely no idea where anything is. I can't click on links here. So let's uh, let's get that fixed right away. So what I'm going to do, uh, rather than actually now, I'm going to close this because uh, we will have problems with the hot reload. That's this thing here. Right. Okay. So first of all, I need to add a builder, and it's a services, and the builder services that we're going to add is called add razor pages okay so we're adding those razor pages the next thing that we need to do is at the bottom of the screen we need to get it to point at those razor pages so app dot map razor pages like so So that's now done. Oh, well, that's all right. Okay, so we popped in at the top here, builder services, add razor pages, and down here, we're gonna do the map razor pages. So I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna close that and save it. Yep. Right, now we need to add some information. Well, we need to make sure that we can now see the login and the um, register. So let's do that now. So first of all, we need to go into the views and we're gonna go into shared and layout. And we're just gonna go into the HTML or the razor page for uh, layout. Now, just down here, we need to add a line. So we're gonna be basically calling on the login partial. Uh, no, we don't want it there. We want it just under there. So it's partial name equals and it's login partial like so and then we close it off like that save it run demo and now we've got the register and login so if I click in login it brings up the login page if I click in register it brings in the register page. If we uh, hadn't done the other two things that we did on the program CS, let me just uh, comment those two lines out for you a moment. So comment out that one and comment out that one as well. Okay, 
go back to run and click on register you'll see that it doesn't do anything it, they don't like it so it's really important that we add these two lines to the program CS the, the program main program page okay now that we've actually put in the links for login and register, it makes sense to go straight into register and let's just start filling that information out. So we go up to identity and into pages. We should have register under accounts. There it is. So I'm going to go first into the CS, the uh, controller for this. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go and look for the input model. Okay. And for the input model, I'm going to type this out rather than just copy and paste it. So I would kind of expect you to do the same. So in the first instance, we're going to be adding required because it's a required um, cell. And it's actually capital R for required. There you go. Um, we're going to do a data type. Data type. And the data type type for this one is going to be text. So data type dot 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 text. Got there in the end. Okay. And the display is going to be. So we're going to do display again, just like we did in the last one. Display name. Whoops. Display. trying to be clever now this day name equals and we're calling this first name okay and we're going to create a string value so it's not going to be value this is going to be first name okay so exactly like that I hope oh not exactly like that because we don't want that space in there can't use a space in um, a variable Okay, now what I'm going to do just to make it easier for me, I'm just going to copy that and display name is going to be last name and the variable is going to be called last name also. Okay, so those are the two input models that you need to add and then we're going to go down, right down. Right, let's create user, because we don't really want that. So I'm going to say new app user. Okay, and we're going to create the, um, the new app user. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be, again, I'm going to type this out, first name equals input dot first name comma last name and you can see it's already guessed what that is well this is going to be user name equals input use uh, email and email equals input email okay and um, we need the colon at the end because again that's uh, really important in C sharp to make sure we got that colon in there Okay, so that bit's now done. So I'm happy with that. Just going to scroll down, make sure there's nothing else I've missed. Okay, no, I think we're good there. So I'm just going to save that. And we're going to go to the register page now. And I'm going to copy this free as form floating piece of code here. Go to home, paste it, get it out of the way. This is going to be the input first name. And it's not going to auto -com complete. Don't want it auto completing at the moment. Uh, we don't need that either. First name. And again, first name in there as well. 
Okay, so happy with that. Oh, we actually don't need that bottom line to be fair, so we can get rid of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy that. Control V. And we're going to have input last name, last name. Okay, let's save that and have a look, see what we've actually got. So I go to register, and we've got the first name and last name. Let's try this out. So I used Fred Flintstone before. So Fred Flintstone, email address F Flintstone at bedrock.co.uk. We'll do, pop in a password. register oh maybe I type that in wrong let's try that again at least we know that works okay yeah we've received the email jobs are good let's log in a moment so we'll try Fred's Flintstones login at bedrock.co.uk using that password and you'll see that hello Fred Finstone's up there let's go and have a look to see if I'm just gonna pop this over to here look at the code over here okay so I'm grabbing it over to here because one of the things that I don't like is this Flintstone uh, F Flintstone at bedrock.co.uk what I'd rather it do is actually state what the person's name is so let's go into our layout. Let's reduce that just down a little bit. There you go. So we can still see it. So let's uh, let's see if we can get it to do that. So we go over to the login partial, and on the login partial, there's a line that basically calls the uh, get username. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. So we're going to highlight the. Um, get username and instead what I'm going to do is we're going to get the user instead so get user async okay and it's the user then I'm going to hit dot and then I want to get the result of the first name okay now if I hit save hopefully just up there it should change to Fred so hello Fred so that's how you would change the greeting on your screen from hello and the email address to hello and the first name. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and if you have, give it a thumbs up and uh, be sure to subscribe. I will have more videos in the future. Thank you.